Hi, we're going to take an intro look and into what nth roots are. So nth. Um, let's start over here. So I, I have a radical sign here, the 9 underneath, and this little n. Normally, uh, you would see no number here or maybe a 2. Uh, this is where the n in the nth comes from. That n is going to change. We're going to, we're going to look at different examples other than twos. And that little spot is called the index. And just for further definitions, the little house, the line here is called a radical. And the number inside underneath the radical sign is called a radican. That's the nine. So if you see those words, that's what they reference to. Now let's come back over here. So square roots. So you don't see a number inside that little index spot. So we know that's going to be a two. We're looking for a number times itself to give me what's inside. So what times itself gives me four? We know the answer is going to be two. What times itself is going to give us 36? Six. But I've got a minus sign out here. I want my answer to have a minus sign. What times itself gives me 25? Five. And I have both a positive and a negative as an answer. Or in the front of the problem, I want to put that as my answer. Now, what does a plus minus have to do with square roots? Well, technically, this is wrong. Because we're looking for a number times itself to give us four. Well, you could say positive two times positive two gives me four, that works. But what about a negative two times a negative? Negative, negative gives you a positive. So what this is called, is called a principal root. Uh, it's just any kind of square root that has two possible real answers. And when we only focus on just that positive version, that positive half of it, it's called the principal root. But just know that when you take the square root, you really have two, a positive and a negative value. Okay, so definitions, definitions. Now let's actually get into solving problems with nth roots. Uh, I don't see a number in my index. So if there's no number, I'm going to put a little 2 there. That says what times itself gives me 16. So here I end up saying 4 times 4. What number got repeated twice? 4 got repeated twice. Okay. Um, and again, when you have a 2, you don't necessarily have to rewrite the index of 2. It's always understood that it's there. Anything otherwise, you have to show. So like this next one, I have an index of 3. I'm looking for what gets repeated 3 times. In this case, 2 times 2 times 2. What got repeated? 2 got repeated. Okay. Uh, moving on. I'm looking for something that gets repeated 4 times when multiplied gives me 625. So in here, when I see a 5, I'm just going to kind of take a random guess and say 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. If I were to multiply these, 5 and 5 gives me 25, 20, 25, multiply 25 and 25, I end up with 625. Uh, what got repeated four times? 5 got repeated four times. This big number. Now we're looking for something that gets repeated five times. Okay. Uh, I know that it's going to be something like this, and let's just double check. So 3 and 3 gives me 9. 3 and 3 gives me 9. Then I have a 3. It gives me 81. 81 times 3, it will give us 243. What got repeated 5 times? 3 got repeated 5 times. Now, there's got to be an easier way to know what numbers to try out here. I could have just tried 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, 4, until I got there. Uh, is there an easier way? Kind of. It's just having a chart on hand as to what your time tables are or your exponents. So see this, screenshot it, write it down. Be aware of what those equal numbers are. So 1, 8, 27, 64, and so on. These are all numbers that are going to help you solve anything with an index of 3, 4, 5, and in this case 6, and we can continue on to uh, exponents of or indexes of 
seven, eight, nine, it doesn't matter, they all work. And that is taking a look at what nth roots are. 